Uh, let me begin by thanking the people of Idaho and the people of Utah for an extraordinary night. Um, we won both of those states. Uh, we got um, almost 78% uh, of the vote in Idaho, and uh, we did equally well in uh, Utah. Um, we had a very positive night. Uh, we continued a series of post-March 15 elections where we have now won three out of four contests. We won two out of three last night. And when all of the results are in, I believe we'll have won those contests by uh, gaining some uh, 20 new delegates on top of Secretary Clinton's. Uh, when added to Democrats abroad, uh, where we got 69% of the vote, we have closed the delegate gap by some 25 delegates in the last week. Uh, when I have talked about the political revolution throughout this campaign, what I have talked about is my hope that the American people will become increasingly engaged in the political process. As I understand it, we had record-breaking turnouts yesterday in Idaho and Utah, uh, and that is part of what the political revolution is about. When large numbers of people come out to vote, uh, they're going to vote for change, uh, and we are going to do very, very well. Um, we have come a very long way in this uh, campaign. Uh, we started off at 3% in the vote, about 70 points behind Secretary Clinton. The CBS poll a few days ago had us at uh, five points down. That is a huge margin uh, and difference that we have made up. I think most significantly what Democrats all over this country are noticing, that in every, virtually every national poll, uh, Bernie Sanders does significantly better uh, against Donald Trump than does Hillary Clinton. There was a uh, CNN poll, I think, out the other day where uh, Secretary Clinton uh, was beating Trump by 12 points. We were beating him by 20. She was losing to uh, John Kasich by six points. We beat him by six points in that poll. She tied Ted Cruz. We beat Cruz by 13 points. I think that uh, as we continue uh, into uh, June, uh, you are going to see superdelegates and Democrats all over this country asking themselves what is the most important question, not whether I like Hillary Clinton better than Bernie Sanders or Bernie Sanders more than Hillary Clinton. The question that they are going to be asking is who is going to beat Donald Trump or another Republican candidate. And I think more and more people are concluding for a variety of reasons that Bernie Sanders is going to be that candidate. Last point that I want to make. Um, President Obama is in Cuba, or has been in Cuba, no doubt talking to Raul Castro about democracy and the benefits of democracy. Well, we got an email uh, last night from a woman uh, in Arizona who was waiting online for five hours to vote. For five hours to vote. Now, whether that, uh, whatever the cause of that problem is, People in the United States of America should not have to wait five hours in order to vote. We do not know how many thousands of people who wanted to vote yesterday in Arizona did not vote. We don't know if they wanted to vote for Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, or whoever. We don't know that. But in the United States of America, democracy is the foundation of our way of life. People should not have to wait five hours to vote. Uh, and what happened yesterday in Arizona is a disgrace. I hope that every state in this country learns from that and learns how to uh, put together a proper uh, election where people can come in and vote in a timely manner and then go back to work. Um, okay, that's about it. Any questions? Senator, you spent um, quite a bit more time in Arizona than Secretary Clinton. Why do you think that she ended up beating you? Well, she got more votes. That was why she beat us. But is there but, like uh, a certain reason? Or? Well, I mean, well, let's start off with the reason why we got 78% uh, or 80 percent of the vote in Utah uh, and Idaho. Uh, I don't, I can't give you that answer. I would surmise that it is similar to what has happened in other states around this country. Uh, we have done uh, very well with young people. I am not aware of any exit polls, so if there were exit polls, I could give you a better answer. I'm not aware of those. Uh, we have done very, very well with young people. She has done better with older people. 
Uh, now, what I still do not know, and what has confused me with regard to Arizona, to be honest with you, is last I heard, and if somebody wants to correct me, please do, that there were about 600,000 people who voted in Arizona. That is significantly less than we had anticipated, to be honest with you. And I think the larger the voter turnout, uh, the better we do. Now, to what degree, or whether it was significant or not, that there were people having to wait online for many, many hours, uh, how many people simply walked away, were they thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds, I don't know. Uh, maybe that was a factor as well. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, can you walk us through the path, your path to the nomination as you look at the upcoming calendar, obviously with caucuses in Alaska, Hawaii, Washington State, then on to Wisconsin? Which states are you expecting to be able to win? Well, how do you make those delegates? Well, you know, one of the things that has happened, as I think all of you have followed the uh, campaign, understand, is there have been a lot of contests in the Deep South. And the Deep South, as it happens, is the most conservative part of the United States. We are now moving west, where I think you're going to find Democrats far more progressive. Uh, there will be, we did very well, uh, obviously, in uh, Utah and Idaho. Uh, this weekend, there will be contests in Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii. Now, I'm not into speculating. I don't know what the results will be. We're working hard in those states. We think we have a good chance to win those states. Obviously. The major states that are going to be coming up in the next weeks and months uh, will be California, uh, largest state in our country, and New York State. Uh, we are working hard in those states, and we think we have a good chance to win. So if we could do well, as we did in uh, Idaho and Utah, uh, if we can do well in the state of Washington and just a couple of days ago, again, I'm not predicting, I can't tell you what the results will be, but we had 35,000 people coming out to three rallies uh, in, in the state of Washington just a few days ago. Now we're heading back there. So if we can win in Washington and Alaska and Hawaii, uh, if we can pave the ground for a victory in California, in, in New York State, I think we have a path toward victory. How did you feel San Diego's rally went last night? Well, it was great. Uh, it was great. Uh, I wish we could have had a venue uh, that could have allowed uh, more people to get into one room. We have to do it into two separate rooms. But uh, I don't know what we had out, 13, 14, 15,000 people. A and again, one of the points that I want to make is what I am gratified about in this campaign is that we are doing so well with young people. And that's just not a demographic, you know. What that is is the future of our country. It is the future of the Democratic Party. And when we win overwhelming percentages of the votes for young people, it tells me that the young people are tired of establishment politics and establishment economics. Uh, they understand that there is something very wrong uh, with our economy when they are likely to have a lower standard of living than their parents if we don't turn things around. That's the American dream in reverse. And I will also tell you that the young people of this country are tired of doing the right thing, of getting a college education or graduate school education and ending up fifty, dollars $100,000 in debt, they think that does not make much sense, uh, and I agree with them. And also, uh, we find a tremendous response uh, to, need, to the need to take on and combat climate change, uh, to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. That is also something that young people are, I think, very uh, interested in doing. Yes, sir? Does your future California schedule depend on what happens no, it does. Look, <laughs> you know, right now what you're asking me is, what's your path to victory? And that's a fair question. But 10 months ago, what you would have said to me, hey, come on, Bernie, you're a nice guy, but you have no chance to win this at all. So we have come a very, very long way. Uh, we think that uh, we are the strongest candidate campaign to defeat Donald Trump. We are in this thing to the end. Uh, we think, I mean, from a simple, let me give you two reasons why. From a, ba and, and you know, I know media gets a narrative, and this is the new narrative of the week, you know, but uh, why in God's name would we not give the people of New York State and California the right to determine and voice their opinion as to who the Democratic nominee would be? I mean, it's absurd. Of course we would. But second of all, uh, and more importantly, uh, if, as is my goal, that we defeat Republican, a Republican candidate in November. The way you do that is to generate a lot of grassroots enthusiasm. 
And the way you generate grassroots enthusiasm is to have real debates on the real issues facing the American people and campaign in every state in this country. That's how you bring people together. You know, what happened yesterday in, in Idaho and uh, Utah, I mean, there were lines a half a mile long of people just trying to get in to participate. And those people will vote in November. So if we believe, as I do, that you defeat Republicans when there is a large voter turnout and Republicans win when there is a small voter turnout, man, it is absolutely essential that we contest, uh, contest every state in this country. Yes, sir. May I follow up? Sir? Yeah. Your party nationally has written off California for years. You're right. Until it's expedient. Well, that you raise a very interesting issue, one that I feel strongly about. And if elected president of the United States and uh, de facto leader of the Democratic Party, I will change. I believe from the bottom of my heart, and this is not, I'm not introducing a new idea. I have to tell you that my fellow Vermonter Howard Dean raised this idea a long time ago. And that is, I don't understand how you could be a national party unless you're active in 50 states in this country. Democracy is to me what America is about. And you don't write off California because you, or Vermont, by the, by the way, because you think these are strongly progressive states. The people here have a right to listen to the debates, to get deeply in. Wow, this is the largest, California is the largest state uh, in our country. So if elected president, if uh, becoming, uh, I become leader of the Democratic Party, we will revitalize the Democratic Party. It will become a grassroots party in 50 states in this country. Its effort will not simply be to raise money from wealthy people. Its effort will be to involve working people in a democratic way, young people in the process. You know, I have been to meeting, a, after meeting all over this country, we have 10, 15, 20,000 people, young people, many of whom have never been involved in the political process, working people who have given up on the political process. They're coming out. And then I go to democratic meetings, and you have 1,000 people out there. So we need to revitalize the Democratic Party, make it a party of the people. And when that happens, uh, the Democratic Party will be strong uh, all over this country. I, let me just conclude by saying this. To my mind, when you look at the Republican agenda of huge tax breaks for the wealthy, of cuts to Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, a refusal to accept science and climate change, this is not a party that can win a national election. Problem is we've got to revitalize the Democratic Party. When we do that, uh, we will win very easily. Yes, sir. Well, the talk about fundraising, um, she may have outraised us in the counties, but we now have raised uh, over five and a half million individual campaign contributions. So if you want to talk, if you're talking about money equating to grassroots support, I don't think there is a debate, but that we have that. Uh, she raises a lot of money from wealthy people, that's true. Our average contribution is $27 a piece. I think we're well over five and a half million individual contributions from close to two million people. I can't give you the breakdown for California. Uh, I'm not here to tell you that I think it's going to be easy to win here in California, but we are going to work very, very hard. Um, the rally uh, that we had uh, last night will be the first of uh, many. Uh, it was a great rally here in San Diego, and we're going to take that rally idea uh, all over uh, this great state. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Senator, I was wondering, is Arizona an indication that more work needs to be done for the Latino vote? Well, we don't know, and you don't know. You know, what we learned is we started off uh, in very low numbers with the Latino vote. If my memory is correct, we actually won the Latino vote in Colorado, uh, and we have done increasingly well in other states. So I don't know what the breakdown is. I suspect that among young Latinos, we probably won. So we are doing very well, but obviously we can always do better. Um, but I think uh, we have made a very significant progress with the Latino community. To follow up on that, I just want to see if you're going to be focusing changing things to be overseas. Well, California is just, you know, I come from the state of Vermont, which in California would be a small town. <laughs> you know, so it is such a huge state. Uh, and we are now, you know, putting together our organizational uh, approach. Um, 
and you know, one of the difficulties is is that media is so expensive here. I mean, you know, you could just spend a huge amount of money with relatively little media. So, you know, our uh, campaign will be based on grassroots activism, as it always has been, uh, on working and bringing out the vote with working people, uh, with young people, uh, with veterans. Uh, so we got a shot. It's not going to be easy, but I think we've got a shot to win here, and I think uh, we've got a path to the White House. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, 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 yes. Well, let me talk about these things. Let me repeat it, because sometimes there is confusion. What we are talking about now are delegates, all right? We lost Illinois, and we lost Missouri. We lost, I think Secretary Clinton ended up with three or four more delegates than we do, all right? And I know the headlines is she won the state, but add them all together. We won with Democrats abroad, more delegates. The margin was greater than she won in Illinois and Missouri, okay? So the point is, is delegates at this point. And last night, as you know, we ended up with, uh, uh, I think, 20 delegates more than she did. That's what we got by winning decisive votes in Utah uh, and in Idaho. I'm sorry, did I miss your point, or? Oh, I mean, but you guys spent like 1.3 million in, as in Arizona. Do you, I mean, do you wish that you spent less time here? Do you feel like you didn't follow the effort you put in that you closed the gap a little bit? We, look, again, it is a question of delegates. Uh, if we had lost Arizona to the degree that she lost Utah or Idaho, it would have been devastating. I don't remember the exact number of delegates will be shy uh, in uh, Arizona. It's, what is it, we have a number, Mike, is it 15 or something? 15 delegates, all right. And if we had done poorly, it would have been 30 delegates or 40 delegates. So we won last night. Of the three states, we ended up with 20 delegates more than her. Throw in Democrats abroad. We had a pretty good week where we won three out of four contests and ended up with some 25 delegates more than she did. Thank you all very much. Okay. See you around, I am sure.